Who came to haul Jesus home? That's what we'll talk about today in Mark 3. And last time we got started again with the Pharisees and Sabbath. And Jesus says, Sabbath is for man, not man for the Sabbath. We're going to continue that conversation. But you can tell there are quite a few people having problems with Jesus right now. So Jesus goes to the temple. We heard this before. And there was a man with a withered hand. And he, Jesus says, hey, come here. And then he says to them, is it lawful on Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save life or to kill? And they wouldn't answer. They wouldn't say anything. So Jesus stretches out his hand and heals the man. And people were mad about that. The Pharisees were angry and started, it says, held counsel with the Herodians against him and how they could get destroyed. And that happened so much later in Matthew, but the plot is on. The Herodians were going to be the Sadducee collaborators in Jerusalem who were working with the Romans to keep Israel in place, in line, making sure nothing went wrong. The Romans would have known who Herod was and the Herodians, who the Herodians were. If you're doing things on Sabbath that helps people and you think that that's bad, there's something wrong with what's going on with you. Crowds are following them everywhere. And he went to Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem and this Edom area beyond the Jordan and Tyre and Sidon. So all these were been cities that Romans would have known, particularly, I think, Tyre and Sidon, because this was far up north. It was part of the 12 tribes land, now would be currently part of Lebanon. So he went to all these places. And so I think the Romans would be like, look He goes everywhere. He talks to everyone. This is not just a Jewish thing. He's not just hanging out in Jerusalem. And everywhere he went, there were crowds. And they had to have boats ready in case the crowd got too big. It says, quote, lest they crush him. He had healed so many people. And the word had gotten out that so many people believed in Jesus. And then it said, when unclean spirits saw him, they cried out and said, you are the son of God. It's interesting because we get a lot of people today saying, you know, Jesus never existed, or if he existed, he was just some nice dude who hung on a tree once. They're very dismissive of him. But you know what? The demons, they know exactly who Jesus is. Then, because we're all about the action, he went up to the mountain and he called those he desired and they came with him. That means his apostles. He appointed the 12. It's going to be in the same order that we saw before. He gave them their mission. You're going to go out there and preach. You're going to cast out demons. And basically, their mission is given. Very short again. This was a lot more detail when we talked about Matthews. And so then it said the crowd gathered again and he couldn't even eat. And when the family, this is the interesting, this is new here. When his family heard it, they went out to seize him for they said he is out of his mind. This is when Jesus got home. So Jesus is not having the relationship with his family that we would hope he would have. There's a lot of apostles we know a great deal about, obviously, Matthew and John and James and the other John and Thomas we hear more about and certainly Judas. But there's some others like Nathaniel, which we don't hear a lot about. We hear Bartholomew, which means son of Ptolemy. Ptolemies were the Greeks. And we just don't know a lot about them. But You will hear traditions about it. When I was in India, I heard about the apostles, Bartholomew, Thomas, who made it all the way to India and Asia Minor. We don't hear much of them in the Bible, but we hear a lot about them out there in the world. The scribes came from Jerusalem. So now the big scribes are there and say, this guy is possessed by the devil. He is casting out demons in the name of demons, which doesn't even make out sense. And she's like, how is that even possible? You can't have demons casting out demons. You can say what you want. You can have all these sins. You can be forgiven. But when you utter blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, that is a sin that cannot be forgiven. Because they were calling him an unclean spirit. That is basically saying a bad thing about the Spirit of God, that God's not a good God, that Jesus isn't a good person, that this is an evil spirit instead. So again, they're rejecting not just Jesus, they're rejecting the Holy Spirit. Boy. When I say share something with someone, go share that with your pastor and talk about what the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is, because that is a big topic. And I think people walk away from it feeling, could I be doing that and being worried about it? 
So then Jesus' mother and brothers show up at the door. They're standing outside and the crowd's all there. And someone says, hey, you know, your mom and brothers are out there. And he says, who are my mother and brother? For whoever does the will of God is my brother, sister, and mother. And people take it as a slam against his family. They are coming for him. So he is saying, I don't think you're not doing the will of God. It's not that he is dismissing his family. He is increasing the definition of his family. Whoever does the will of God, that's my family. I know it sounds rough and I know it sounds pretty terrible, but he is saying, my brothers and sisters and mother is much bigger than what you think it is. It is everybody who does the will of God. So I think it's more of an announcement of who's at the door than it is reprimanding his family. But it also indicates, I think, that people were worried about Jesus. We know that Mary knows about his miraculous beginning. She was there. And Jesus' family members were worried about him. And so they came to seize him. You know, <laughs> okay, Jesus, come home now. You know, this is out of control. But this is a point where they are worried about Jesus. And it's not a cruel thing, but it also shows a lack of understanding of who Jesus is. And that ends Mark 3. Boy, <laughs> we are going through this fast, right? How many weeks did we spend this with Matthew? But the thing I'm going to pray about this week is thinking about familyhood and belonging. There are people who are very much, I don't know, blood is thicker than water kind of people and say, you know, my family is going to be my brothers and my sisters. I grew up as an only child. I have a brother now, but I didn't growing up. And so family was one of those things that I depended a great deal on friends. But in this sense, God changes the definitions to his family being anyone who does his will. I'm going to meditate a little bit on that. And what I'm going to pray about is this concept of family and that people feel that Family is bigger than what they give it credit for. And that I hope they see other believers, people who try to do the will of God as their family and pray for them so that they understand they have more people around them, more people who are there to share with them. And the thing I'm going to share is finding out more, probably from someone who knows more than I do, about what exactly it means to blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. I'd like to really know more about that. I know where people worry about that or don't worry about that and maybe should, but I want to know more. And so that's what I'm going to share with someone who knows something more about it than I do. Already one, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. I think so far this experiment of whether a lay person can go through the Bible has been interesting to me. I hope it's been interesting to you before we got to get a sense of who Matthew was, the things that were important to Matthew. And now we're getting a different viewpoint. So I feel pretty validated that this is a good way of studying the Bible. I'm glad I started this adventure with you and I hope we're doing a good job. Please remember, you can always email me at smallstepswithgod.com. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs>